Theatre for Admissions in England is publishing his annual report today and we're told that it will reveal the extent of parents' efforts to get round the system by finding ways of bending rules, cheating even. It's thought that Ian Craig, he is the adjudicator, will propose some sort of penalty for such families. The question is how fairness can be best achieved? How tough should the rules be? How should they be policed? Can they be policed? Is there a case for more lotteries now used for some schools, by a quarter of English local authorities. We're joined by Dr Sheila Lawler of the think tank Politea and also by Matthew Taylor, Chief Executive of the Royal Society for Arts, Manufacture and Commerce. Um, Sheila Lawler, what do yes. you make of this? Because clearly there are situations in which parents um, lie on forms to get children into school of their choice. What should be done about it? Well, of course, it's better that nobody should should lie or should have to lie. And I think that we really have to look at the system of school admissions and whether it's working. In my view, we have a very top-heavy uh, government-regulated school admission system which doesn't satisfy, I think it was 30,600 parents appealed the last time round. And there's something wrong if a parent can't even get their child into a local primary school of their choice. Uh, well, but of course if there are mm. um, a lot of children and not enough places That's at the school, inevitably there's going to be an argument about which school... Uh, you go to, which, you know, one school can't take them all. You've got to find a way of sorting it out, haven't you? I mean, you can't pretend that, Ab you know, it just will find its way. Absolutely. But in my view, what you've got to do is you've got to open up the system so there are more school places. Now, in theory, this should be easy, easy to do. Good schools should be able to expand more, come in. But as the local authority is normally the the body which gives permission for freeing up the system. It doesn't want any competition to the existing schools in its area, and that is precisely the problem. So I'm in favour of the Conservative policy of opening up and having more schools opening up to meet parents' choice. Matthew Taylor, where do you stand on this? Well, I think we should start by the fact there's some quite good news in the sense that the number of failing schools, that is to say the kind of school that you would really be worried about your child going to is has dropped dramatically over the last uh, few years. Secondly, in a way, it's a good thing that more and more parents are striving to get their children uh, into the best schools. It shows that, we, as a society, we increasingly recognise the importance of, uh, of education. You mean the fact that they want to make the right choice for their children? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I think that the number of parents going to parents' evenings and getting involved in school choices has gone up. That's a kind of major social... A major social trend. Having said which, I, I think it's also important to try to calm people down a bit. Uh, the, the, the most important determinant of your child's success will be the support that you give your child at home. School has an impact, but it's a relatively minor impact. And the other important point is that schools change. You know, what, what, what implicit in this kind of idea of the best school is that a school that is good is good forever, and a school that's bad is bad forever. My younger son uh, goes to the school that Oliver Letwin said he'd rather beg in the street than send his children to, and that's gone from and fewer than one in ten getting five GCSEs to being above average and that's in four or five years so you know parents I think have sort of led into this notion that if you don't get your child into the best school it's a complete disaster there are alternatives which is to support your school um, and help your school to improve. Do you accept Sheila Law that, that although of course there are uh, cases where somebody will look at a couple of schools and come to the conclusion that one is pretty bad and one is pretty good there are a lot of cases where there's a sort of paranoia, maybe based on leak tables that don't tell you the whole story, that parents become infected with, where they get an idea about a school being either bad or good, which is greatly exaggerated. I think this is a very, really a very improper line of argument. Parents have to have information about a school. Now, how you provide that is a matter for discussion. But it is very important that a parent should follow his or her hunch. Absolutely. And they are very much uh, on, the, on the... They have their ear to the ground. Um, if you've ever talked to parents at a school evening or a playground, they really are up to speed. They see their children. They know the damage a bad school can do. And I really don't agree with dear Matthew because... A bad school has a very bad impact on a child, not just academically, but also pastorally and socially. And don't give it to me that the school doesn't make any difference. If that's the case, let the government just get up and get out of the schooling. And I think, in fact, it would be the, much the best way if we had I less government interference in schools. No one's saying, no one's saying, that, no one's saying that the school makes no difference. What I'm saying uh, is you that said a minor difference. No, what I'm saying is that parents 
uh, the, all the research shows that school, the impact of school is actually less than the question of parents' engagement. If parents are engaged and supportive of their children, that's the most important thing. But the other point here to recognise is that because more parents want to get their children into the best schools, we have a simple choice. We're either going to have difficult issues at the margins, where we're going to have to distribute places using lotteries or whatever it might be. Mm. The only alternative to that is to have lots and lots of surplus places in schools, which is what Sheila Laura, I think, is advocating. But the idea that in the public spending framework, or the public spending situation we face over the next decade, that any government is going to be creating thousands, tens of thousands of surplus school places in order to deal with this issue. I mean, I'm afraid that's completely unrealistic. No, no. Sheila Lawler? Yeah. No, we have tens and thousands of surplus uh, administrative and bureaucratic positions like the school adjudicator and this whole paraphernalia of school appeals admissions procedures. This is a very top-heavy system based on endless bureaucracy appeals and inquiries. It, it is not unlike a Soviet system where you go through one and the other. If you, have, you have a fault system now where if you allow 32,000 parents to appeal against the decision of some, an arbitrary decision by an official as to where their child goes to school, and of those 0.5% succeed. And I think it is a deceitful system we're operating now, and I think the government should say, let the schools and the parents Work it out for themselves, and in that way you will encourage more movement and just let more places open up. They need not be big, heavy, um, expensive places. Primary schools are not expensive to run. What is expensive is the overhead. I'm afraid we must leave it there, Dr Sheila Law.